And are you staying connected through the web that comes out of your heart center and reaches the woman's heart next to you? You bring your hands into prayer pose. Ah. 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 Asatoma satkamaya tamasoma jyotirgamaya Metroma Amritangamaya Aum Shanti 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 We inhale deeply, we suspend our breath. And we exhale. Open our eyes, we bring our arms out to the side, palms facing up. That's your inhale, on the exhale, your palms facing down. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. You feel a slight arch in your spine. Now we bring our palms towards our third chakra, solar plexus. Palms face each other. We take four segmented inhalation going out to the side and four segmented exhalation, bringing our palms closer together. It's like. All breath is through the nose. All the movements we are practicing this morning, helping our heart center. A center of love and compassion. And compassion for all beings around us. No matter what kingdom they are living in. One more minute, four segmented inhalation in, four seg segmented exhalation out. The pranayama for balance. Good, now from here, we bring our left hand onto our knee, palm is facing up, right hand is palm is facing your heart center. That's my inhale, exhale, I just switch the hands. I'm not touching my heart center. I just bring the palm close by. And you can find your breath here, you're fanning your heart. You're connecting through the first, the second, the third, into the fourth energy center. Mm -hmm. 
I'm giving the prana into your heart. Like a loving emotion. Nurturing yourself. We slow down. Now we move our left palm up to the level of our chin, and then the palm goes down, right palm comes up. We're just moving our hands alternately up and down from the first energy center to the fifth, our throat chakra. Just imagine you're connecting the auric field of your energy centers through the movement of your hands. You're finding your own breath pattern here. Because it's so important to move our arms in different fashions to keep the heart healthy. Well, then we slow down here too, bringing our right palm in front of our heart center, moving from the heart uh, through the throat center, the third eye over our crown, bringing our arm around, and then the left palm moves forward, up, and around. So we're connecting the heart center with the upper triangle in our body. Really move through your shoulders now. Feel how you're lifting your diaphragm. Let the breath be strong and gentle at the same time. You hardly hear your breath, but it's a deep inhalation and exhalation. Just a little bit more. And 
And the next time when your left hand comes towards your heart center, you place your left hand onto the chest, right hand on top. Take three deep breaths, inhale through the nose, exhale, open mouth. We can let go and open our heart to Nirmala's sharing. Thank you, Siddhi. Good morning, my beautiful ladies. Namaskaram. Today, week 64, November 13th, my time. I don't know. Is it the, it's the 13th for you also. A couple of updates before we begin. One is that um, I think we're now we have 21 women coming to join us on December 12th. And any of you who have not um, responded or need some assistance in housing or transportation or whatever, please let us know. City and I are very delighted to be um, having the opportunity to sit with you all in person. So as many of you as can join us, we would love that. And then today, Grace is with us and she will be with us from 845 until 915, giving us a beautiful overview of Ayurveda. And for me, Ayurveda is one of the most important health and wellness and for chronic disease applications modalities that there is in the world. So I'm very excited to hear Grace is, has been a practitioner for many years and a teacher and um, a yogini herself. So she has many, many different um, hats that she wears, but today she's going to wear her Ayurveda hat. So I hope you can all stay with us for that today. So I, for me, as we're in the last few weeks of this year, I feel like this year has been a heavy one for many people. It's been a heavy one for, for me, for sure. Um, and I think for most of the women I've spoken to, and I feel as though it's a great opportunity for us to plant some seeds in this last few weeks of this year some seeds around our heart space and moving into 2022 with this expanded sense of being part of the whole, the larger cosmic conscious heart space, as well as taking care and tending our own heart space. And so I'm going to start today with um, a mantra chant, and I'm going to post this for you so you can see it. And then I'm going to play um, a few, just a few minutes. Um, it's Aham Prema, which means I am love. This is a chant that I would love to have all of us chanting every day to be reminded of the love that we are, not that we have and that we offer, that we just are. It's people often think, oh, I will be doing something that makes me loving. And it isn't about doing, it's about being love, becoming and being and inhabiting love that you just are. Everything about you oozes love. And I would hope and wish and um, call a blessing if each of us could embody that in 2022 as our natural state of being. So I am going to play a chant that we can chant along with, each of you can chant along with and for a few moments and just close your eyes and allow this chant to really move through you as you embody these words and this expression. Aham prema, aham prema, aham
So sit with your legs uncrossed, feeling your feet on the ground. Or if you're sitting on the ground, just make sure that you're seated so that you're really firmly touching the, the floor beneath you and cross both of your hands over your heart space and make clockwise circles with your hands with your heart, softening our heart and opening the door, the door to our soul. Allowing all of those different emotions and sensations and feelings that we have to enter and exit so softly and smoothly. All of the things that our heart is holding in this heart space, grief and joy and hopefulness. With each breath, let your heart space expand with each inhale. And with each exhale, let it expand the love into the space, into the room that you're in, into the town that you're in. Thank you, City. And taking your hands that are holding all of this love that is you, and just release them in front of you, holding your hands together open with this love that you have collected from this heart space that is always with you. And just gently place your hands in your lap, holding this love that you carry with you everywhere. Being reminded that at any time in our day, we can collect this heart space love and we can open up our heart by simply using our hands to unlock this door that sometimes gets locked. Just unlock the door. Hmm. So in Sanskrit, the Anahata, which is our heart chakra, our heart energy center. We've spoken about this before. It means unhurt or unstruck or unbeaten. It is the eternal, the eternal space in our body comes through our heart chakra. That which carries on after our body is our heart space. The soul resides in that space. So the invitation today is to be reminded that our heart can be the filter through which we see life. That we can choose to have the heart space be the lens through which we experience everything that comes through our life, regardless of the sentiments or the emotion or the strength and power of whatever is coming that we can use this heart space and this lens to allow everything in our life to be love. The heart chakra energy is the center of our body. We have our three chakras, the lower chakras, which are more physically oriented. And we have the three higher chakras, which attend more to our soul space and our relationship with the divine. The heart is that doorway. It is the door. And for us to be in a practice of remembering that we are love and that this door can be kept open 100% of the time. The paradox of the heart is that it's really two hearts. We have the physical heart, which has its own challenges in our health system. And it is the warrior part of our heart, the heart that the part of us that when we are cracked open, we feel broken. And when grief sweeps through us, this physical body and this energetic body is just overwrought with what's coming through us. But the other part of our heart space is the eternal space of us, the eternal love heart space, which continues. And that is the unstruck, unhurt, unbeaten part of our heart, which doesn't matter what comes through us, 
we still have the eternal love that exists in that space. Our heart has the capacity to be both fragile and strong at the same time, to be both finite and infinite at the same time. It has this complexity and this paradox, which mirrors the complexity and the paradox of living in this embodied form. And it is up to us to decide that we want to be living into a space that is inhabiting both the finite and the infinite love source that comes through our heart space, that we can be that at all callings. And how we do that, this is why we shore up the first three chakras in our system, why City does so much of our grounding and so much of the mudra work that we do is to keep us in the strength and in our groundedness so that when things come through our heart, they don't topple us over. Our first chakra, our muladhara is the one that keeps us rooted, the one that allows us to stay on center even when we're being buffeted around. And we work on that, on that chakra to make sure we have that foundation. And that's why we do our micro practices and our meditations and our chanting, all of these things to keep us rooted so that we can withstand the movement that comes through our heart so that we don't have to close down our heart when it becomes painful or when it becomes unknown and we go into a, a sense of despair, we don't have to shut down. Our heart does not have to only be open when it's in joy. Our heart can be open all the time. We must live courageously through our heart. If we don't live courageously through the heart, we're not living our life to the most authentic degree that we can. We're protecting ourselves and we don't need to do that. Our heart has the capacity to handle whatever comes through. And we have, by the, our tendencies to take care of ourselves, we are protecting the heart. So we use our first chakra to help with our groundedness and with the roots of where we come from so we know who we are. And we use our second chakra, the Svadhisthana, the sacred waters that flow through us so that we can reclaim and be really in the depths of the pleasure and the desire and the sovereignty of being a woman. And we allow that to come through us, but that too doesn't throw us off. That doesn't drown us. It just takes us in the flow of this divine stream that we're in and allowing that to move up through us, coming through our heart. So everything is coming through our heart. And we use that third chakra, our Manipura, the chakra that takes the power, it's the fire in us, which I'm sure Grace will speak to today, the fire, the Agni, that keeps us burning and transforming and moving and being able to become that which we want to become, that which we're desiring comes through the strength and the, the fire of transformation that's in our Manipura. So these three chakras lead up to the heart chakra. If we're tending those three chakras, we're preparing ourselves to be able to handle that which comes through the heart. And we don't have to shrink from it. We can live in the courageousness of our heart that knows whatever comes around us, we have prepared ourselves to be able to sit with it. One of the ways that we get thrown off is that we forget that our truest base essence is our heart. And we forget that we have access 100% of the time to our spiritual heart. And if we can remember that while we may be sitting in grief or we may be sitting in disappointment or we may be sitting in a transformation that is unclear or unsettling for us, that we can always sit back into the, our spiritual heart and know that we have the support and know that we have the resiliency in that space and know that we have the eternal nature that is us, that we are already. The sacred element for the heart is air. This is why Siddhi does so much pranayam with us, why the breath is so important, which we spoke about last week, why we need to practice 
using our breath in a way so that we have the capacity to bring it into the heart when we need it. We don't just start a breath practice when life goes down. We start the breath practice before so that we're in preparation when things come through us. And the color of the heart is green. And it reminds me that so many people I know are connected to their heart space through nature. And nature is green. I heard that green is the one, I don't know if this is true, but I heard that green is the one color that has more hues and possible variances in it than any other colors in the spectrum. Whether or not that's true, I know in nature, there are so many different greens and so many different textures. And we are living in the green of our heart space. Green of our heart space. The heart is the center of our intelligence, according to yogis. In the Eastern tradition for millennia, the heart is the space which speaks. In that um, there's a company called HeartMath, which some of you may be familiar with, and they've done a study of the electromagnetics of the heart. And they have found that the heart actually has more electromagnetic pulses than the brain, that more of our intelligence is coming through our heart than is coming through our brain. We have to tend our heart space. We have to connect to the fullness of our heart space. So much more to say about this, but what I would like to say for this week going forward is that one of the ways we sabotage ourselves in our heart space is that we, have, we are critical of ourselves and of others and of situations, but primarily of ourselves, of how we handle something, a situation, how we adaptable we are or we are not, how talented we are or we are not. And we use those just small little incisions into our heart space with our attitudes. And I'd like us to take this week with a rubber band around your wrist. And every time you notice that you're seeing life through a lens that is not love, it is not the love that you want to live into, I want you to just pluck it. We have to retrain ourselves to be in the heart space 100% of the time, because this is the space where we're going to be able to actually express the fullness of who we are into the world and into our own being. This is our eternal nature. And if we don't tend our heart space, we're missing a whole connectedness to the fullness of ourselves. So put that rubber band on this week, ladies, and notice as you go through your day where it is that you're not seeing the world through this beautiful green lens and remind yourself that it's a choice. It's just simply a choice. Thank you, Nirmala. <laughs> so I would like to continue with Aham Prima. Um, and I would like for us to add a, I call it the love multiplier. So mudra, I want you to make sure that you uh, can really see that the tip of your thumbs are touching, the tip of your index fingers, and then you bend the middle, the ring finger, and your pinky. And I connect the tip of my middle fingers. I connect the tip of my ring fingers and my picky, pinkies. So from here, it looks like this. They're all touching. And then I have this mudra at the center of my heart the thumbs pointing towards my heart, my index fingers are pointing forward. So again, tip of your thumbs, tip of your index fingers. Bend your middle fingers and hook them, so to speak, into each other. Then your ring fingers, then your pinkies. It looks like a heart when you look down. And then we close our eyes. And you have a choice to chant with the mantra, but you can also see how you're sending your love out into the world and how you receive this love back into your heart. So having this constant exchange, the fragments of love coming in and going out. 
and coming back in.
just for a moment, we allow ourselves to envision how the fragrance of love emanates from the center of our heart out into the world. And how we receive the love into our heart. We're bringing our hands into prayer pose. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Thank you. We will give now. Yeah, let's, Um, I'm going to just one, before I introduce Grace, I